You were the one, though, who convinced Warren to buy an electric car company in China, BYD, which is now, here we are a year later after first discussing this, opening its first Los Angeles offices. Um, you're extraordinarily supportive of the guy who runs BYD. It's a company that you initially said you might not understand. How did he convince you to put $100 million of Berkshire Capital to it? I think he threatened to shoot me. <laughs> <laughs> It took a pretty, it took a pretty rigor. I, no, I, it, the truth is he understood it, I'm sure Bill understood it, and, and I didn't, but I, I had enough confidence in Charlie that in this game he knew a whole lot more about it than I did, and, and, uh, and uh, he's right. Bill, when you looked at the BYD investment, what jumped out at you about it? Well, it's a company that's got a great culture of invention. It's got a lot of engineers, um, it's moving very fast. What, 10,000 engineers? 15. Six, about 16, but it's going up every minute. Yeah, uh, well, every minute. And the <laughs> need for <laughs> batteries, uh, both in the car and the grid, uh, is pretty phenomenal. And as a side business, they happen to make conventional cars, and they've done extremely well at that. Uh, the three of us are looking forward to going over later this year. We're going to actually look at this incredible company. It's almost unbelievable that runs it, and Charlie. Uh, How's it going everyone? It's Sam. On this channel we talk about investments and we are talking about Warren Buffett, Berkshire Hathaway, Charlie Munger's $6 billion bet on Chinese electric vehicles. Now this last clip was from 2011. This was an interesting interview that they did with Bill Gates too, talking about their $232 million investment into a Chinese manufacturing company. Now at the time, they really focused on rechargeable batteries, but over the last couple of years, they've moved into EV significantly more, but they are in a lot of different sectors within EV, from buses to bicycles to batteries to the, the cars themselves and Last year, they made a quick switch and became one of the world's quickest and largest manufacturers of masks. So this company is going to be a really interesting one. It's one that I'm keeping an eye on. It's one that I think has seen a lot of growth this last year. They've gone up hundreds of percents. And I want to bring it to your attention because, again, I think Warren Buffett kind of gets a rap as someone that's behind the times a lot. But they have made a significant amount of money. They own 8.2% of this company that's a $71 billion company. So they own about $6 billion of this company that I wanna to bring to your attention today. So there is a link down there to Webull. In case you want a couple free stocks, you can definitely get those up to $1,850. Helps out the channel a lot. There's also a link down there to BlockFi in case you want an interest rate on your cryptocurrency. And there's a link down there to M1 Finance in case you wanna see another investing platform. There's definitely a link down there if you wanna support the channel in that way too. So like I said, Buffett and Charlie Munger made this $232 million investment. Now this company is $71 billion and it's come down a decent amount. So it's $22 and 66 cents. If we look over the last month, it was up at $34. So this was a company that was over a hundred billion dollars. Now this company does several different things. First of all, they manufacture automobiles, battery powered bicycles, buses, forklifts, solar panels, rechargeable batteries, and trucks so they have a variety of different products and this thing is a mammoth so uh, they have some news recently that i'll show you here in a second uh, that's really new so we'll go over that in a second but first of all let's take a look at their electric buses so this is their electric bus they've gotten several contracts recently for their buses so they had a contract for over a thousand fully electric buses for Colombia, they had uh, they had won a contract awarded by the state of New Mexico to supply a variety of electric buses. They accelerated a partnership to manufacture electric bus chassis in the UK. They began delivering the first parcel of electric buses to Nagasaki, Japan. You can see the majority of their sales are still oil-fueled vehicles at 237,000. This was up about 2% over year-over-year. Over year. You can see the new energy vehicles actually was down about 17% since the year before. And they had about 189,000 vehicles sold. And then they had a nice increase of about 45% in their bus vehicles. This company was hit by the pandemic. They definitely had lower sales 
last year than they had in 2019. But again, they were more profitable last year than they've ever been. They increased their profitability uh, pretty significantly, about threefold. And they're taking advantage of China's three-year blue ski action plan. So this is kind of like a green energy plan. It's supposed to reduce pollution and emissions and it accelerates renewable expertise across multiple clean tech sectors, which obviously this company has a lot of them. They, they've they been working on their energy storage business also. So they've been able to take advantage of this. Like I said, they did increase their profitability significantly last year. Their net profit was about $1.8 billion up about 1300% year over year. BYD just came out and there's a little press on them today because they had beat the amount of deliveries Neo had and Xping had for the month. They had 16,000 vehicles last month or units last month. Now you can see that this is still down from December 2020 when they had almost 19,000 vehicles. Now they're having about 16,000. Now BYD is starting to also sell some of their batteries to other companies, which I find this really interesting. They have not given who they're going to sell to, but they are planning on selling some of their batteries to other other competitors in China to hopefully increase the efficiency on their manufacturing end. Now, I am not buying this company, but I think this is a really interesting company to keep an eye on. And they kind of compare it here to Tesla at the end of this article. And while Tesla has destroyed it over the last couple years, you can see that over the last year, it's actually giving Tesla a run for its money here. But it has seen a little bit of a sell-off. This company is under the ticker BYDDF. And like I said, it's on the OTC market. It's a huge company that's on the OTC market, but I'm gonna keep my eye on it. I think if, if people start to sell this off significantly more, this might be an interesting company to pick up. Now, I'm not quite as bullish as some other people on this company, but I think it is an interesting one to keep an eye on. And it's really interesting that Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger were in this thing so early and feel so strongly about the company. So let me know your thoughts on this down below. Let me know if this is a company you'd ever invest in. Let me know what you think about it. Uh, let me know if you like this where I kind of bring another company up that maybe you haven't heard of before. If you want to see exactly when I'm buying and selling different stocks, you can check out the Patreon. Thank you guys for getting that free money from Webull up to $1,850 as long as you deposit $100. And I will see you guys in the next video. If you want to see the video yesterday on Elon Musk, and Kathy Wood going back and forth on whether the stock market is overvalued, you can check out this video here on the end screen, or you can check out the video on why I'm so bullish on Palantir down here at the bottom. Thank you.